interview with Story Musgraves. Story, uh, you gave a fantastic uh, presentation this morning uh, at our conference, the Institute of Financial Operations, and so many of the people here gathered have um, looked towards space exploration for inspiration, but they look at their work, their daily work, as just just that, just work. How do you keep people inspired with uh, their, da their daily work and, and try to tie that in with um, their passion for living? Yeah, my lesson is it's not what you do, it's how well you do what you do. And so that's the way you can use space as a vehicle. It's a playing field just to live by the rules and be excellent every second of the day. It's living up to other people's expectations. So that's the key thing. You're living up to other people's expectations to achieve their outcome. And that's the privilege. you got a great playing field. Mm -hmm. You talked earlier about the importance of working together as a team and, and being inspired by those around you and sort of raising their game. You've obviously experienced that in space, working on missions and you know having, having a deadline, having huge budgets, and knowing that you need to work within those budgets. That's what people deal with here all the time. Again, it's it's the same type of thing, but I'm sure your, your experience can, you know, can teach us a little more about how we can do this better here. Well, we can all uh, teach each other, but it's the passion for the human relationship. Uh, social networking and social relations, I don't care what your technology is, it's still the most important thing that you can, uh, uh, you can bring to work. You have to have that. And so space has got a lot of teamwork, but so does financial operations. I often use the commercial airlines as a great place to, uh, as a model for teamwork. The tools that we use uh, in this industry in, involve many things, uh, but they have changed over time. You are no stranger to change. You've seen many changes, and not only in your personal life, but again, with, with regard to what's happening with uh, the space program. How do you deal with that on, an, on a daily basis and keep people motivated when they're reluctant to make those changes? Well, yeah, we got technology, you got technology, and a lot of times it's the same technology. You're on the playing field, and so you have standard, you got standards, and you got quality, and it doesn't matter if it's aerospace or the Olympic athlete or financial operations. It is the esprit de corps and the pride of going home at night knowing you do the best you could. So there is a pedigree of process. There are procedures, there are standardizations about how you will operate. In the aerospace world, if you get out of there, someone's going to die. In your world, if you get out of there, there's going to be problems. So it's best practices based on the standards and the knowledge captured that you've done over the years. Again, so much of, uh, of what we talked about so far is, is about passion and about motivation. You have many fans, many younger fans, people who, again, you know, think it's really cool to be an astronaut, think it's neat, and, but then they don't really know what goes into it with the, the study, the math, the science, the, the, the exploration. That, that is the fun part, but, but there's a lot of hard work there. If you're talking to a younger generation about, not only about space, but about you know, setting goals for their lives as young children, what kind of uh, inspirational words or uh, just talking points that you might be able to have uh, to share with them? It's one step at a time, and so uh, when you're young, you look at so many possibilities, so many opportunities, it's hard to focus on any of them, but somehow what we need to communicate is to be the best you can every second of the day in what you do, because you're going to be able to connect those dots to the past and the future. I fixed the Hubble telescope because I'm a farm kid and because I was an airplane mechanic. I got mechanics very early in my life. But somehow you have to communicate to people that for their own sake, not just for other people, that you go home at night and you love what you did and you sleep well at night because you were the best in your business. So somehow we need to communicate to people being the best in their business is important, not only to the external world, but to themselves. Mm -hmm. And each challenge that a person has, you're realizing that every day is not the defining moment for their life, that they could be doing something on a Monday and maybe on a Wednesday do something completely different, but they apply the same skills as they move forward. We, we may do that with careers. You have seven graduate degrees, is that correct? I mean, how, how in the world did you con convince yourself, really, to get seven graduate degrees and, and see the, you know, the power, the value in doing that? I just changed life. I went from computers to the brain. So it's back in the school, back in the postdoc fellowship. Then space came along. I'm in the middle of a medical practice. Space came along. Back in the postdoc fellowship and graduate school to get ready for that one. 
So when your passion leads and your curiosity, it's uh, the next one leap off and, and go do it. But never forgetting who you are and never forgetting you're going to be able to use every skill you ever develop. That's the creativity. One final question, since we will not have the opportunity to do it. You've been there. You've been in space. You've seen the beauty of the universe. What goes through your mind? We've seen your beautiful photos, but what goes through your mind when you just sit back and you just sort of look around and see all that's around you? Well, it's a privilege and the opportunity to be there, but also I brought the farm kid into space. I got someone that got, was in the forest at age three on the rivers at age five, and I expanded my horizon. So thank goodness I did get to go. Mm -hmm. Story of Musgrave, thank you very much. You're welcome, Matthew.